To be frank, I'm a terrible YouTuber. Sometimes, you know, if I get like a review sample, review unit, something I gotta send back, you know, I'm gonna review that quickly, you know, send it back, hopefully in a couple weeks or something like that. But when I buy stuff, which is a lot of stuff, I just kind of like use it for like months or whatever. This is one of those examples. This is the GMK Tech eGPU that I've been using. The model here is the 80 GP1. It is a AMD 7600 MXT inside of here. Uh, that's gonna be, for people who don't know AMD, that's gonna be around a 4060. I've actually recently tested it against the 4060 eGPU, and this is actually faster. Probably, you know, 2025 and drivers have come along. At launch, they were close, but um, it was like an AMD fine wine type thing. It's just generally a more powerful GPU. It doesn't have access to DLSS and whatever, but I've been using this anyways, uh, Honestly, I don't even know. I can't even tell you. It's been at least two months, if not three, that I've had this. I started this review. I don't even, I'd have to go back and look at my footage and see what I have to re-record because I've done like teardowns on it. I've done all kinds of stuff. Oh, this thing is sick anyway. So what this is here is it's an external GPU. So it uses a mobile chip, 7600 MXT, which is a mobile chip. And in here, you have that GPU. You plug it into various devices and you get a GPU. Devices that may not have a GPU. Um, and another cool thing is not just that it has, you know, all these different outputs that it can use, it also has two primary inputs. If you can see that there, there's a USB 4 and there's an Oculink. USB 4 will be supported on a lot of different devices. Pretty much any Intel laptop that's like, I don't know, five, six years old or even maybe even a little bit older, if it's a good one, should at least have Thunderbolt 4 or Thunderbolt 3, which is basically the same. That Those laptops, I mean, even if you have a relatively old CPU that's not very good, you could plug that in. That CPU probably will be enough to drive this here in certain types of games. So you can take a relatively old, like a few year old like Ultrabook, like an Ultrabook that's not remotely meant for gaming, turn it into a gaming machine. Now, it also has an, and, but the problem with USB 4, you do lose a little bit of performance. We're looking at probably about 70% of max performance. So let's say this thing can give you 100 FPS in whatever case. If you hook it up over USB 4, uh, maybe you're getting 65 or 70 FPS, which is still amazing over what you would probably get with that iGPU, even in something as powerful as this, but you're still losing performance. Good and also bad. This also has Oculink, as you can see here. It has that Oculink port there. Oculink is very different. Uh, it works up in a similar type way. Uh, you plug it in, I don't have an Oculink cable around, of course, they always vanish. Uh, you plug in the Oculink cable into your device, if it has an Oculink port, and it's gonna give you massively better performance. Okay, so taking out four screws, one, two, three, four. Just remove these little patties. And just a little Phillips, four of them. That, and I'm assuming we go in here. Ooh, very easy actually. That's a huge heatsink inside. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, no wonder this thing. Well, spoiler. It runs very cool and relatively quiet. It's got a giant metal heatsink on it. Lots of copper, and a big fan. Not just an area, but depth. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so that's the fan, very good. Is this gonna come off now? It's touching something over here still. Anything else? Okay, so there's that. Am I missing a screw here? Oh, no, it's just, that was just stuck in. So that's good. Okay, so now we're in the bottom. You can see just some dollar controllers. A little bit of metal heat sink, which is good for whatever those are. Yeah, it's just a little piece of metal. I might actually, you can put some pads or something on there, very thin. It should be fine though, it's like direct metal. This off then and there we go so looks like they're using actually they're using a paste okay so we're going to improve that it actually doesn't run hot doesn't run too noisy but there's always room for improvement so we're going to do room for improvement i'm going to add some ptm yeah it's looking pretty good these look okay these pads not too bad fairly thin right if you want to replace them they look like they're about they're not even a millimeter i don't think just one sec
Yeah, I don't actually have any millimeter pads now, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, so these are 1.5 pads, and then those must be one. Interesting. Okay, so we have the PTM on there now, applied. Take off the cover, and we'll put it back together, and we should be good. I'm not going to worry about the VRMs and the VRAM with thermal pads. It seems to be running fine. Now, there's a couple of things to be considerate of when using any eGPU in general. So I'm going to set this handheld up here, which is also, by the way, it's like a little laptop thing. So it actually is a really good platform. I can do that. Now you can see me. Look at that guy there. Set that up there. Now, you can plug it directly into the Oculink, which I'm going to do. Plug the Oculink in there or the USB 4, whichever, and drive it on the internal screen over that cable. And then this is going to do some compute. And it's going to go back into here and it's gonna drive out of that screen. Uh, but the, what I can do here, if I want max performance, is I use it as like a dock type thing, right? So plug that in here and go like that. Now, if I'm outputting to an external monitor, see HDMI, didn't say, oh, it disappeared, it was too fast, <laughs> and like that. So now what's gonna happen, let's kill that light. Uh, what's gonna happen here is all of a sudden, we're going out of here into that, and that goes out to the screen. It's that, that. Now, if you have an Intel-based machine, like that's an Intel-based machine, I have to then install the AMD drivers. Sure. So if you have a USB 4, uh, Thunderbolt 4, and you're running Intel, then you have to run the AMD drivers. This laptop already, or this, I guess it is a laptop, this device here already runs the uh, AMD drivers because it's an AMD chip, so I don't have to do anything. I just turned it on, right? Just press the power button, and you're good to go. So that's that there. And if I load up a game now, it'll work. Sometimes Windows can be a little quirky. Uh, so you go like this, and it'll be like, I don't know which one to use. It is possible when you have iGPU. So what you can do here is you can come in here like this, and let's, I don't know, let's pick one. Uh, what do I want to test today? Let's test Oblivion. Oblivion's a good game. Uh, and you'll see just like a huge increase in performance. So you go like that anyways. And then right now, it, it's actually it's actually preferring the power saver. So if I were to launch this game now, see, Windows is stupid. If I were to launch this game right now, it would actually default to my iGPU, which is fine, I guess, but... You can, Windows is stupid, right? I don't know why I did that. I have, actually, that's really weird. Uh, you can set, tell it to the side. Sometimes it'll decide right. Sometimes it'll decide wrong. You can say, I want to use the iGPU for sure. Like, I just don't want to use that. Or you can say, you have to use my eGPU, right? So then I go like that. And then I just basically just run the game. When I run the game, it'll use that. So let's do some testing and show you how powerful this is. I'll do some comparisons to the iGPU inside this. And again, this is... This is essentially, other than the, what is it, like 9060M or whatever, 9060S, this is the most powerful iGPU really that's on the market for consumer-based gaming devices. Uh, so I'll show you how this thing runs. So let's pop into the game here. We'll do Oblivion Remastered. We'll do um, kind of like mix, we're not going to do ray tracing. Okay, so with these settings here, which is not the like easiest to run, we're at medium. this game is incredibly hard to run. It may not look like it, but it's brutal. Watch some of like Digital Foundry and Hardware Unboxed or my content showing this thing running on like 5070 Ti's and stuff and just smashing them. Uh, anyway, so we're looking at around 30 game, 30 FPS gameplay here uh, on this mode here. Turn this now. I am. You can see here we're only on 20 watts for the CPU. Um, you can turn it up slightly. And in this case, because it's using the iGPU, right? We all might see a little bit of performance jump, not a huge amount. This thing's a fairly efficient chip, but. Go like that there. Okay, so that's, uh, you know, 25 watts there, for example. 24, whatever, I might have misclicked 24. A little bit extra performance, right? Still gonna give you better performance. Now, the thing is, because it's an iGPU, um, you know, you definitely do wanna add more watts. You don't wanna run this thing at like 10 watts or something like that, uh, because those watts are gonna go to the iGPU and the CPU here. So we're at like 35, it's fine, it's respectable. Right, this is a very hard to run area, we're outdoors, you can play the game like this. You could put it on low instead of medium, which is normally what I would do. I'd put it on low instead of medium in this area, uh, and it would run just fine. Give it a, it does take a second, and you'll get the little NVIDIA, the little AMD thing pop up here. Right, see how the screen flicker? So now we're on integrated, or off integrated graphics. See, it's a little different when you're using Oculink. All this stuff doesn't pop up, because it doesn't need a controller to basically come in here and you can go, you can eject it, for example. Right? And it tells you what's running. You don't have to do that with the Oculink because it, it is always running and you can't eject an Oculink like that. It would actually crash the system. Um, so with USB 4 though, it's just plug and play. You can just use it and when you're done with it, just unplug it. 
Okay, so 1200p again. It's all the same, 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 same. Medium, medium, coming down, and balance. So same settings. Give it a sec. It's much more performant, right? So again, this is the most powerful iGPU that you can buy in like any consumer handheld, anything like that. There is nothing faster. So again, if you have like a, I don't know, an ROG Ally X or something, the ROG Ally X is actually 30% slower than this handheld, at least 30% slower than this handheld, straight up. So, you know, the difference between the two of them already would be massive. Then all of a sudden, you know, we're adding this iGPU to this handheld and it's still adding 50% more frames, approximately 50% more frames here. That's a lot to the most powerful iGPU on the market. So if this was a ROG Ally X or something, you'd be adding like doubling. You'd be like doubling the FPS essentially. Didn't make a difference, right? Because the CPU, we don't need all those watts into the CPU anymore. So now this thing can run way cooler and quieter. And this is going to be sitting on my lap. This thing's going to be way off on the back of my couch. I actually have a much larger USB 4 cable and it's going to be, you know, like a meter away from me and therefore running a lot quieter. And we're getting about a 50% increase in performance. I think we can probably go down to 15 actually. So 45. Makes no difference. Right? One if, no, it's exactly the same. Cause the C we're like, this is a GPU bound type situation here. Okay, so here we are back in the game. Okay. And we can see there's already a boost in performance, right? Huge boost actually, it's actually more than I thought. So 66, so we went from 31 on the iGPU up to about 45, right? So something like that. So about so about 50% performance increase, something like that. And here we're doubling it. We're actually doubling the performance here. Now we're at 65, right? Now the iGP, eGPU is a little bit noisier, but again, it's not noisy, right? It's sitting right beside me. Around 40 dB, that's like as quiet as like a thin ultrabook. And again, this thing, it's sitting right here. I would actually have it further off. This cable is very long, as you can see. It's a very long cable. I actually have it like probably a meter away from me. So you can barely hear it. There you go. So huge jump in performance, absolutely massive jump in performance. Now let's test something here. Uh, I haven't done this live before on this specific device. I've done it on other devices, but we'll plug this in externally like that. Okay. And we'll come over to my screen. Okay. So now we're on my external screen. I guess this is the right resolution, 1200p, I suppose. Yeah, I guess it is. Um, this is a wider screen, so. Right? It's not as much as you think going to the external. You do lose some performance, but it's not like massive. But there's like stuff around it happening on Windows. You can go like that. Right, and there's a little boost of performance, an extra few frames with even that stuff going on. So outputting back into the screen with Oculink is actually not as much of an issue as it is with USB 4. You do lose a little bit, but it's around the same. Right, so it's gonna run really well. You can run it like a dock like this. Now, the other thing you can do now, because I have a much larger screen, I can go and go into uh, let's go full screen now, right? So we'll go full screen. This is a 1440p ultra wide, not even just a 1440p. This is much higher resolution than normal 14. This is much higher resolution than normal 1440p, right? So we'll go like that. We'll go medium, balanced. I don't know. Sure, we can actually leave it. So go like that. So now we're at 1440p ultra, and we're still getting 45 FPS, or even 50. This is way, way, way higher than 1200p, way higher, right? It's massively higher than 1200p. It's not even normal 1440p, right? Come down here. We can even turn it up now. We can go high probably. It's gonna start to get a little rough, but then we can come down here. We can say, ah, we can use more scaling though because it's a high resolution. Fourteen forty p high ultra wide, right? And now you're at the re the territory where you can put on, for example, uh, frame generation, right? But if you, this again, it's not meant really to be like a heavy fourteen forty p 
type. It can, it absolutely can do 1440p, but it's more of like a 1440p light uh, with like scaling type stuff. Again, this game is really hard to run. So you'd normally go with like a medium type thing at 1440p. And then, you know, you're, oops. And then, you know, you're gonna get really good performance here. Right, so if we go from that, go down to, for example, medium, something like that. This is where more it's gonna be at 1440p ultra wide. This is above normal 1440p, as I said, right? If you were to go down to normal 1440p or you were to, like just normal 1440p would actually decrease the uh, demand quite a bit. Right, and so that's the GMK. So we'll just move this out of the way here and we'll bring it in while it even runs. We'll talk about it while it even runs. It's a fantastic little guy. It's very small, right? It's actually, it's small. Like it's a small little thing. Now it does have a big power brick. The power brick is off the way. Whether you like that or not is your call. Like I'll bring the power brick in here. It is a big power brick. I'm, I actually prefer that because this actually sits, like I tuck it behind my couch. It just kind of vanishes. I don't worry about it. And the cable is super long so that this little guy just on its own can sit up on the back of my couch and I can use it. It's relatively quiet and it massively increases my performance of my handhelds, my laptop, whatever. Uh, it's fantastic. Some of these type devices do have like a power that's actually built in, which would be, you know, something like that would be much larger, uh, which would work as well, but I don't want that. I actually want the power to be somewhere else. Just work, don't even worry about it out of sight, out of mind. And then I have this here kind of just hanging out. So fantastic. It's a fantastic little thing. So that's the GMK tech. Um, I think it's a fantastic little uh, eGPU. This is the one that I use as my daily. I use it all the time with my handhelds. I do use it from time to time with my laptop back there. I use it primarily with Oculink, as you can see hooked up now, but sometimes I even use it with USB 4. Fantastic little device. I think you should check it out.